You are listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics with a unique perspective. Here's your wild card, Richard Kearney, and your whimsical, Ryan Pulley. Welcome one and all, boys and girls, men and women, children of all ages. It is the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show, my Big man. Big Show. What's up, man? Well, first of all, I, I need to give you a heartfelt congratulations. The AFC West champions nothing. are now the AFC champions, your Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I respect you. But I do notice that a lot of these Chiefs fans out here are becoming like those Patriots fans. Very arrogant. And the more I see y'all dancing, having fun at the uh, parades and pep rallies, I'm okay with. I don't want to see many more of y'all getting liquored up and falling out of trees during the parade. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's going on? Fall. Oh, it, it's going to happen. <laughs> it is definitely going to happen. And trust me, if the Raiders win, you get drunk and fall out of a tree yourself. <laughs> I'll probably will. I'll probably break my damn neck on the way down. And <laughs> be feeling good, too. Now, what do you mean by arrogant Chiefs fans? Give me an example. What's talking about? Um, It's just that air of invincibility. It It, it sounds too much like We've won every year. No one can stop us. Really? You've only won two. Been Where there are you seeing a couple that times. At? Not, not, not from everybody, but I hear it a lot. I mean, it it, it has really, you know, in the workplace, you see a lot of it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and it's we're going to the Super Bowl. We're gonna beat the hell out of those Eagles. We're gonna beat those Cincinnati Bengals and get to the Super Bowl. Okay, you won, but you you didn't whoop their ass. That was anybody's game all the way up until the end. And, you know, we will get to that later. Should have whooped their ass if it wasn't yeah. for all the injuries. But, you know, if 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 ifs were fists, we'd all be drunk, right? <laughs> hey, I like that. And that's true. Okay, so before we get to the Chiefs, the Eagles, and all that good stuff, let's keep it in the AFC West. A couple things. Uh, you mentioned to me right before we went on air – Sean Payton to the Denver Broncos. I am seeing that too. God, right next to his picture says head coach, Denver Broncos. I don't yep. quite know how to feel about that. Now that they got a competent head coach, they might actually be dangerous. I, yeah, they, they definitely will. I, I'm, I, I foresee that 15-0 and 0 streak against the Broncos might come to an end in the next few years. I'm, you know, going out on a limb there. That is possible. What what I'm more um, surprised with is the deal. I mean, they're basically stealing them. Um, the same or the Broncos are trading away this year's first round draft choice and next year's second round draft choice in return for a draft choice next year plus the coach. So they're basically giving up giving up a draft pick, two draft picks for him. That is a steal. And, and I think that's probably the best that uh, New Orleans was going to get because there was no way he was going back to New Orleans. And New Orleans made the smart move. Get what you can and, and get the deal done. On the flip oh, side no, of I totally agree. I'm curious why he chose Denver, though. Mm, their defense yeah. is good. Their quarterback is, is sucks. I mean, he might he might be able to do some with Russell Wilson. Well, he said he was hurt for most of the beginning of the year. I don't know if I buy all that, but wouldn't you say you were hurt for most of the year if you played that trashy? Butt hurt, maybe, but uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> now, on the flip side of that, if you go to Vegas, why aren't the Raiders doing this? They refuse to entertain any offers for a trade for Carr. 
they refused to let him speak to other teams. Really? Is is it a foregone conclusion that Carr is no longer a Raider? I mean, what are they doing here? I haven't heard anything, but now there's I only would two other options. He would be done. There's only two other options here. February 17th rolls around, which is in 16 days. That man is owed 40 mil by the Raiders outright. Or they cut him and he gets nothing. Why would you cut him if you could get some type of compensation? Now, when you say he gets nothing, he's still under contract, right? So if they do cut him by the 17th or on the 17th, wouldn't it still go against? Wouldn't they take like a cap hit? Five million. Five million in a cap hit. Five million dollars, basically. So they're going to save $35 million by letting him go. Right, right. Gotcha. Well, I don't know. He just replaced Burrow in the Pro Bowl, so. Yeah, I mean, you you got to love Peyton's mindset on there, Um, Peyton Manning. Hmm, I'm the coach of the Pro Bowl. Really don't like anybody related to the Patriots. How can I stick it to genius Josh? Oh, I know. (laughs) Derek Carr is my new quarterback. (laughs) Right, I'm surprised. I I don't know what they're gonna do with him. I didn't know that they were refusing talks or taking any phone calls or maybe no. there was a maybe there was a difference of opinion in week 16 and that's what caused him to be benched. Maybe he got into it with the coaches and they that was a d- discipline type thing. You know, if it know. was any other quarterback, I could. Find, I could find something in that, but we're talking about the closest thing to a choir boy that the NFL has. I mean, he and, might have gosh darn them all to death in a conversation. You know, Dad Gummit, why aren't you doing this? And gosh darn it. I mean, he might have been doing that and they didn't like it. I don't know. They didn't like it so much that they sent him home and said, Don't even bother to come to the last two games. But he still Usually, got paid, so that's yeah, all right. Yeah. Got, I'll take or that game he? check. Or did he? Because don't you have to play to get a game check? Nope. Anybody on the 52-man roster gets the game check. Reason being, if somebody gets hurt, you got to be active and available. And if they choose to send you home or you're injured, you still get the game check as long as you're on the roster. And he was on gotcha. the roster. Roger that. Roger that. Yeah, and, and and I hate to speak ill of my team because that is my team. But ever since McDaniels has been the head coach, every week there's some kind of head scratcher with this dude. And I don't want the Patriot way in Vegas. Now, say what you will about John Gruden. Too late. John Gruden was building this team in the image of your Kansas City Chiefs. He really was. He was trying to anyway. And I could see it. Especially, you know, in the game where the wheels he on was, the bus went round and round, but he was building it with in, in the direction of the Chiefs when we had Tyreek Hill. That is true, because Henry Ruggs would have been the Tyreek Hill. Correct. Yeah. So Waller was the Kelsey. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see that. I really could. And now we're trying to do it the Patriot way. And the Patriot way is dead and gone. I don't think it's something that can be repeated in today's NFL. Even the Patriots aren't doing very well under the Patriot way. So define Patriot way. Is Patriot way only going to only successful if it wins a Super Bowl? No, no, it is not. Uh, I'll get back to that in a second. What because I mean by I would the Patriot say... way, there, there's, there's a philosophy, which is fine. Next man up. Everybody has that, though. But, you know, that do your job and all that stuff, it works well when everybody that's on that team follows that system to the letter. And if you don't have those type of players, it doesn't work in that type of system. In other words, if if you've got really great tight ends and receivers, you don't have a run-heavy offense. You better have a pass-heavy offense or you're not utilizing them to their skill set. Um, I could see Waller in the role of a Gronk in that system. That'd be fine. But we didn't have the offensive line 
to give the quarterback the protection that he needed. And that's in its at its basic form. If you don't protect your quarterback, your one. system collapses, which is why I think that they should have they shouldn't have uh, pulled the trigger on Carr. Because now whoever you put in there, other than Brady, maybe a Garoppolo, is going to need that extra time. I didn't think about Jimmy G. Ooh, that he, would be a great. He's fit. on the he's on the short list too. Him, Aaron mm-hmm. Rodgers, and uh, Tom Brady are on the short list as the next Raiders head uh, not head coach quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is going to the Jets if he gets traded. I think, but. But remember, Man, Jim, sure. Jimmy G, Jimmy G is a good is a good fit. I didn't even think about that. That, ooh, <laughs> that, hmm, that kind of that's tantalizing to think about. It is. It is. Now, see, this year, all the teams in the AFC West spent money on players to try to beat the Chiefs. That didn't work. I'm already seeing that now. They're trying to hire coaches. Because you have Sean Payton going to Denver. You have the Bron- or uh, the Cowboys offensive coordinator going to the Chargers. All right, here's the list right here. Um, the Houston Texans just hired D'Amico Ryans as their head coach. Yep, we're going to so we talk about he's, that. He was what, with San Francisco? He was the 49ers defensive coordinator. But yeah. he used to play for Houston. He was mm-hmm, an actual right. player for Houston. Yeah, so. he was. He lined up next to JJ Watt. Now the 49ers have requested to interview Steve Wilkes for their defensive coordinator. Now, who's him? I am not sure who Steve Wilkes is. I was going to ask you. I know uh, Frank Wright. Never heard of him. Head coach of the Panthers. Yeah, I've seen that too. But uh, Kellen wins. No, who's the who's the Chargers' new? Offensive coordinator. He just coordinated for the Cowboys last year. They uh, fired him on the Monday. Young guy, he just... The young guy. I, I know his name, but it's Kellen Moore, isn't it? Yeah, it Kellen, Kellen Moore? Moore. Yeah. So I I mean that that right there tells me that okay, players weren't the reasoning that we lost to the Chiefs. It's it was we got out coached. And I see the teams, everybody but the Raiders, obviously, making a move coaching wise to make to match that up but going back to your statement about um the patriot way not working or being dead look at tennessee because that's the patriot way yeah they just have not had the 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 postseason success because they don't have a tom brady but i would put vrabel's coaching skill up against just about anybody in the league Oh, no doubt. No doubt. But that goes back to what I was saying about the Patriot way. You got to have the personnel. If you don't have the right players in that system, it's not going to work. I mean, yes and no. I mean, because if Brady played for the 49ers all these years, everybody would say it's the 49ers system. Let's be real. It was Brady. That was the reason why. Brady was the reason why they won. I mean, let's just swallow that pill as hard as it is to, to now, swallow. Since, since since I have this pill in my mouth, let me play devil's advocate and ask you three questions of the same mind. Let's say the Raiders <laughs> okay. get Brady. Okay. D- how much of a difference do you think it makes? Huge. All right. Before you delve into that, let's say they get Garoppolo. Better or worse? Than Brady? Yeah. Or better than worse than last year? Well, I think it'll be better or worse than last year, no matter any of these cases. <sighs> Brady is a proven winner, so I would still probably say that Garoppolo would be a little bit worse than Brady, but we don't know the fall off. Garoppolo didn't have a full year as a starter under the Patriots. He, I think he played three or four games straight or something like that. He wasn't the overall starter. He was supposed to be. Belichick wanted him to be. Kraft sent his ass out there because he liked Brady Moore. Yeah. All right. I know you said the Jets are inquiring, but let's say by stroke of luck, we get Rodgers. Man. If you get it, here's if you get in Rodgers, yes, you might be okay, but I think 
as a team chemistry, you would be just as bad, if not worse, because he's a prima donna. Everything's about him. You know, he makes everything about him instead of the team. Carr would Carr is a better fit for the Raiders than Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, I don't hate that statement you made, but one thing I'm learning about Mark Davis, he's trying to sell the brand by putting the flashiest, shiniest thing in front of the fans' faces. Oh, yeah, and it's not working. No, it is not working. And, but his dad did the same thing, and it didn't work either. Yes and no. I mean, towards the end, Al made some irrational moves, but when he still had a hundred percent up there, career, through Al's entire career, he made questionable moves. Well, a lot of that was trying to. A lot of that was trying to stick it to the rest of the league, though. Well, no, not necessarily. I'm not talking about that. The political side of the game. Okay, I'm gonna go into the draft, and I'm gonna give the big finger to the NFL. And I'm going to draft a kicker, number one, in the draft. Sebastian Janikowski was awesome, but you probably could have got him in the second, third, or fourth round and got yeah. somebody else yeah. of sustenance in that in that draft. I bet you if we looked up that draft right now, there's plenty of players that, that were drafted after Janikowski that had a better career overall. You, you may be right. Um, yeah. I mean, Also, I remember early 90s, Al Davis. I got to draft the fastest wide receiver. I don't care if he can catch or not. If we can get in the ball and he happens to catch. I do remember that because he did say you can't teach speed, but you can teach him how to catch. And a lot of those guys you couldn't teach how to catch. I mean, he had. I can name on two fingers speed receivers that could catch. Tim Brown and James Jett. Other than that, the rest of them couldn't catch. Didn't he have both Ishmael's? (laughs) The Uh, rocket and the missile? He had rocket. He had Rocket, didn't he? I don't think he had the missile, but... Um, so the missile went to the Ravens then. But, but he he was primarily on special teams for us because he couldn't catch, so... Right. And I don't know. To me, the Raiders have always been a... Now, Charles Woodson was a great pick. Damn good pick. Charles Woodson was a... Yeah. I mean, every team you can pick out has had really good picks. Yeah. I mean, so I'm not debating, but it just seems like overall as an organization, the Raiders have always been dysfunctional. Yeah. Now, see, that's that's where the car thing comes into play. If you <clears throat> if you send him and I wouldn't be bitter if they got something for him, because you can see it. A great example, the Detroit Lions. They could have made the playoffs this year. They were maybe one win away from getting to the playoffs. They are they, they are yeah. they are visibly better than they were last year. And you know oh, yeah. what? Two years ago they gave up their quarterback, watched him win a Super Bowl somewhere else, but they are getting better because of the pieces that they got in that trade. Correct. But they also got a Super Bowl caliber quarterback in return. Yeah. Now, granted, uh shit, I can't even think of the dude's name. That's there now. Golf, Jared Goff. Yeah. He took the Rams to the Super Bowl in 18, but, you know, it didn't win it because that was, I think, the Patriots' last one. But, yeah. You know, so they, in their mind, they were like, okay, we're giving up this superb arm talent, but we still have a proven winner and we're getting all these draft picks. So, as a team overall, that's a great move. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Obviously, we look back on it; it's a phenomenal move. Um, but what I mean by the Raiders being dysfunctional is, from an outsider and an opposing fan base, and I joke all the time. You know, don't worry; the Raiders are going to end up raidering eventually. It doesn't matter how far ahead in this in, in this year has proven it. And doesn't I hate matter to say how it, you're many right. points they have. You're absolutely you're right. We we back. are we are the San Diego Chargers in black. See, the Chargers just started doing this in the last 10 years. The Chargers didn't always charger. You know what I mean? The yeah, Raiders, since the late 80s, since the, I'll be honest, it could be the curse of Marcus Allen. 
I mean, no, since no, Al I would say Marcus that because that problem. we were good. We were good t- anywhere we were good from for 2000. Two years. Not from 2000, 1999, we'll say, until 2002, we were good. Those three years. Two seasons. That's two three seasons. seasons. One under Gruden, two. and then one under Gruden, you were and two good after that. for two. You were competitive for the one after that. The year uh, I yeah, went to, yeah. you know, when you had Gruden and he was actually your coach, I mean, he was molly whopping the entire AFC West. He was yeah. doing what we're doing now. And Al should have left his ass alone. Should've. Y'all probably would have had a few Super Bowls. Well, it it was a, a power struggle. I mean, I know the whole thing behind that. Gruden wanted security. He wanted a multi-year deal as a head coach. Al wouldn't give it to him. Said that we'll talk after the season. And because of the way that season ended with the tuck rule game, Al did not do anything immediately after. So Gruden started shopping himself around. Bruce Allen called and inquired about Tampa Bay. And Al jokingly said, the only way I'll give you Gruden is if I get two number one draft choices and cash. Lo and behold, the Buccaneers called back a couple weeks later and said, okay, where do we sign? And the rest is history. And if I'm Al, I would have raised it a little bit after that. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have took that deal because – Obviously, we went to the Super Bowl the following year with uh, whatever the guy's name is, uh, Bill Callahan. But Gruden knew our plays. And wasn't he out the offensive coordinator under Gruden? Yes. So Callahan didn't change anything. He just ran Not a Gruden's thing. system. Not a thing. Rode and his coattails all the way we, to the Super we Bowl. We destroyed everybody in the AFC. But when we got to the big one, didn't and. and I remember, I think it was Jerry Rice who said, hey, we should have changed something in those two weeks leading up to the game. We didn't. We paid for it. Yeah, it should have changed. You should have made it look like what it was going to be, what they thought it was going to be, but it'd be completely the opposite. Yeah, Uh, because they made Rich Gannon, who was a very competent quarterback, they made him look like a rookie. Yeah, Rich Rich Gannon was pretty good. I was upset when the Chiefs let him go. I still thank you for that, too, because, you know. We should have let Gerback go. If Marty was here today, I would thank him a thousand times over. Rest and in peace, Marty Ger- Schottenheimer. That's right. And if and if they would have kept him, kept playing him in 97 instead of uh, Gerback, we'd have beat the Broncos in the 97 playoffs. All right. We're going to take a break here, but we'll be right back after this important message. Charlie, you ever play roulette? On occasion. Well, let me give you a word of advice. Always bet on black. And we are back. And like the ad said, always bet on black. (laughs) Joining us, Nelson Shields, friend of the show. Nelson's been on quite a few times. Uh, He's most famous for not football. But the damn NCAA Final Four, that pick, <laughs> that pick still burns me up because I sure thought my squad was going to win it. But no, your pick won it. But we ain't talking about the NCAA basketball. We are talking about the National Football League. And Nelson is one half of our two guests that are uh, on the show today. Nelson, as you everybody who's watching this show for as long as you have would know that Nelson is an Eagles fan. And this day could not have come sooner for Nelson. The Eagles are in the Super Bowl. Nelson, what's up, man? What's good? I usually have my Eagles gear on, but I have a little plan for the people at my job where I'm planning on wearing a different jersey every day up to the Super Bowl. And then on Super Bowl, I'm aware that my brand new Jalen Hurts killing them jersey, okay? <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. I have a plan with my Raider gear. It's all packed up until August when training camp starts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I my thought you were going to use it for killing. Just no, to throw no. a little tidbit about the Raiders real quick. My nephew, my son, had got us some gag-like gifts as far as jerseys. 
He got me a nice little Westbrook jersey, alternate 75 year anniversary jersey. Mm. He got my brother a Jamarcus Russell jersey. Mm. And Your brother's my brother cursed. was ecstatic. You know, true Raiders fan. He was ecstatic. That's he one jersey it. I wouldn't wear, brother. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, you know, and you know what's odd? That man actually beat the Chiefs one or two times. Shut up. I didn't even know. That. I didn't even know he won a game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember taking my wife to her first football game. Jamarcus Russell was the starting quarterback. And Lane Kiffin was actually the coach then, too. And we won that game. Mm. So I'm like, ooh. I actually oh, and looky here, looky here. Yeah. On the show with us is the other half of the special guest today. Kevin, good. the Chiefs fan, Manning. Yes, sir. What's good, everybody? Everybody doing? What's up? How you doing? What's up, so, loser? <laughs> all right. So, so here we go. Here we go. Yep. It, take your neutral corners and come out swinging. I want to hear first things first. Since you're on the show first, Nelson, tell me why you think the Eagles are going to win this Super Bowl. The, the reason I think that the Eagles will win this Super Bowl is, is going to be what you saw against San Francisco. And believe it or not, it's going to be defense. See, the defense we play, it allows us to double-team Kelsey and rush four pass rushers. What I've seen with the Bengals versus the Chiefs, they their offensive linemen was really having problems blocking those defensive linemen. Now, imagine if those was Philly defensive linemen. Mahomes is going to be running a lot more than – he's not going to have the time. Oh, and by the way, if he does have the time, we just happen to have the two best cornerback tandem in the NFL. So you can't just throw that down there any kind of way. You got to be kind of sharp. And those receivers they have, rather it be Tony or uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, whatever receiver they got, they can be covered. We've covered, you know, Jefferson. We shut him down for like five or six catches for 60 yards earlier this year. Debo Samuel, what did he do? He did nothing. So we're not afraid of any kind of receiver that they have. Going okay, so know. Kevin, tell me why you think Kansas City will win this game. Uh, go ahead, Big Show. You had a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I did. I just wanted a statement. I'm just going to say this and then I'm going to back out. Who were the quarterbacks throwing to Jefferson? Who were the quarterbacks throwing to Debo? None of them were Patrick Mahomes. You had the fifth string nobody for 49ers. And come on, let's Kirk Cousins. He sucks. Okay, but. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, Y'all didn't even play them. Y'all played Danny Dimes. Let's reverse it. What receivers do y'all have that's a threat? Every single one of them. Because of the guy got, throwing the ball. Nah. I will say this, as devil's advocate, I will say this, Juju Smith-Schuster is a damn good receiver. And it's okay. um, it's, what's the other one's name? That, right, uh, yeah, I'm, look, let me go and step in. Let me go and step in. Yeah, Valdez that was, Scanlon. That was very eloquent, you know, from a Philly fan. I know they can speak eloquently. But, you know, since you're not from Philly, you do got about that much etiquette in you. Whatever. Um, it, here's how it's going to go. Philly's defense is good. We've played against good defenses. And the thing is, our offense is more methodical versus the greatest show on grass that we were last year and years before. Because Tyreek is gone. Yes, Tyreek is gone. But the thing is, MVS has learned how to be a receiver. He don't just go deep. He's running routes now. And he has a good height advantage. I think him and Slay will be a good battle. I look forward to seeing that. Juju is going to overlap Travis to where they're going to have to decide which one do we go, which one do we take. Then we got Tony. We got uh, Miko, which they, <laughs> Philly sweeps, ironically. They run those well. Those are hard to stop. Our line protects well on things like that. Our biggest thing, and I think Philly's biggest thing, who can stop the run? 
that's what it's going to come down to. Both offenses are good. Both offenses are high power. We have to get healthy. We lost more people than a motherfucking army going in in Sunday's game. So before we even say, we'll do this, we do that, I got to see what our lineup is going to be because we don't know who's healthy yet because one thing that, that gives them the upper hand right now is Gay does know if he's going to play. We can't not have him at middle linebacker because if we don't have him, that's going to hurt us because we're going to do the same spot with him we did on Burrow. They kept Burrow at bay because his quarterback does run. He is a threat to run. So we got to have that spot in there. So right now, I say if we're healthy, it's a dog fight. It's going to come down to the last couple of minutes of the game. I don't think either team is just going to go run away from it. It's going to be a back and forth fight. And it's going to be, I think, whoever has the ball last. But if we're healthy, I got us easily winning by five. If All right, before healthy, we go any further, I'm going to okay. make a bold prediction about this game. And you heard it here first, everybody. And y'all can all take this to the bank. The team with Kelsey wins the game. (laughs) If we'd have played Buffalo later in the year, we would have won. We didn't know what our skill set receiver-wise was until they got used to that offense. Now, you know, y'all had this offense in Philly. You know, this is, he made the most bump receiver look like a pro bowler. This is what I, this is what I hate. I, this is what I hate about, like, the narrative that the media paints. So I did a little looking at schedules and everything. Um, everybody always says the Eagles' schedule is weaker. But we... Most of our division went to the players. Now, and then their their next narrative is, well, the NFC is weak. Who was the last AFC uh, Super Bowl winner? Kansas Chiefs. Chiefs. Thank you. In the last five years, who's won the most Super Bowls, the NFC or the AFC? Well, NFC by one. Yeah, because but it's five still, years. Somebody's going right. to win three. One's another going to win two. So let's but, let's accept I, in the last six years how many have won? They yeah, because three, three. I, I mean, I, come I, on, because the Patriots the and the ball, Chiefs. <laughs> well, let's t- we could take Brady out of the mix, and it's probably going to be the NFC. That's why I said the last five years because Brady hasn't been that great. Brady, well, Brady came over to Tampa five years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you take the, him out of the equation, the, it's two and two. It's tied. Hold on. And uh, and the point I want to make about that to the Chiefs fans in that five years, y'all know who won a Super Bowl? The Eagles. Yeah. So, so did the Chiefs. Right. So the here's what I'm saying with the narrative. They they paint this narrative that the AFC is this, the AFC is that. Well, earlier you said Kirk Cousins was a bum. But that Buffalo team that y'all love to say is so strong, I swear Kirk Cousins blew their ass out this year. Right. Now, now, let me say no, this. No, let, let me say no, this, guys. I didn't blow them out. Cincinnati, I don't know who it was for the Bengals, made a perfect statement. Buffalo was built for one thing and one thing only, to beat Kansas, to beat Kansas City. City. They That's didn't it. know what to do when they ran into somebody else. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. Buffalo is not as good no, as what people try to was. paint it to be. And but they try to they try to say like, oh well, they got Buffalo. They got Buffalo on their schedule. They got Cincinnati. What has what has Josh Allen done? Nothing. Thank you. Not a not a thing. Hey, he Nothing. made a great he made a great Gillette commercial. I'll say Thank this, Mister. Sh- I'll say this, Mister. Shields. He's done the exact – he's won the same amount of playoff games as Jalen Hurts. Exactly. And, mm. and Jalen Hurts is already in the Super Bowl. No, I get that. I'm just saying you asked what he did. He's done the same thing as your quarterback. Okay. Now, my point Without going is to the Super Bowl. They, they love to leave Jalen Hurts out the mix. And I hate that because they try to discredit 
They discredit his rushing. I agree. His running touchdowns. What did Mahomes do that was so historical in this last playoff game y'all just played? That Here's they the played thing. over and over. Here's the thing about He ran the ball. Here's the thing about your Jalen Hurts comment. Was he or was he not on the way out the door had he not played good this year? No. Philly wasn't 100% sold on him. Let's be, him and Daniel Jones both had question marks on if they was going to be with their teams next year. They both balled out this year to where they're with their team. The thing with Jalen, the knock that they give on him that I've seen across the board is his, which I agree, he's a better Mike Vick to where he runs and throws. And they still hold that against you if you don't have stupid amount of passing yards. Which to me, if you get wins, you get wins. You put up numbers, you win, that's all that matters. As long as your touchdown interception ratio is, you know, more TDs than interceptions, it really shouldn't matter. And that's the only thing because what Jalen finished with about 3,800 yards, 3,500. So Mahomes got about 37. But this is my okay, my rebuttal. Is that to passing you is, and rushing? Or just but passing? He had, oh, just passing wise, he had about 35, 38. So Mahomes beat him somewhere between 1,000 to 1,300 yards more. And okay, he had but 80, how many? Seven, 10 touchdowns more. And they made a bigger deal about that when. But how many, how many, is, how many okay. rush yards did Mahomes, was he behind from Jalen Hurts? Yeah, that's all right. I, I agree with you. The thing is, Jalen did what the offense allowed, and he put up good numbers. They don't look right. at it like that. In the totality, when no, no offense, Big Show, white quarterbacks put up more passing than. Oh white. my God, he said white. <laughs> shouldn't be my thing That's is true. what you're doing your system and he's right out and, system. and this is what i say so like with brady it's okay for him to have a one two three get the ball out my hand yeah. system but it's 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 bad for jalen hurts to have a uh what they call it the kind of the the uh i forgot the option the option pass mm -hmm. run option offense it's wrong for him to have that it's a setback for him which, by the way, he had one receiver. He had, I believe both the receivers went over 1,000 yards past. So it's not like he can't pass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's very – he's a good passer. And no, then I, it's, it's another thing I'll throw out that's so funny. Yes, I know, I know Mahomes has an ankle injury. I agree. A high ankle sprain, that's hard to play with. But what happened to Jalen Hurts and the shoulder injury? Did they just forget it? Did they just, you know, it didn't hit. It still ain't healed. He Here's the difference. Himself. Here's the difference in that. He had time off. He took two games off because of it. Mahomes hasn't done that yet. I think that's the difference. That's why they make a bigger deal out of Mahomes playing injured versus Jalen Hurts playing injured. Because Jalen Hurts took time off. Allegedly, he didn't get no cortisone shot. You know he's they shot the shit out of that leg before he got to, you know they did. That might you know what that might be true, but just think he's Jalen Hurts. I, I'm not gonna say he well, Mahomes is definitely a better passer from the pocket than Jalen Hurts. He can rely on that. He doesn't necessarily have to run and scramble. But he's he's an accurate passer like that. He's good like that. Jay right, Hurts, now. it's his throwing shoulder that's hurt. So it hampers him to where if he runs, he's got to hit with the right shoulder and throwing his shoulder is hurt. So I'm to me, I'm not saying this to y'all, but the media, what mm -hmm. happened to that? Why ain't we talking about that? Is it because they blowing the teams out? Which I could well, go into that too. Well, let's get back to that in a second. he doesn't run on his feet. I mean, doesn't run on his hands. You know, he's let's, not let's, limping let's, with his shoulder. You know, let's get back to Jalen in a second. I want to break it down a little bit more. Um, let's start with the defense, and I'm gonna start with you, Kevin. Who has the better defense, Kansas City or Philadelphia? Oh, Philly does because they got vets. We got a team full of rookies. I mean that that's go that's gonna be Philly. 
this is gonna be like how the Bengal game was, where everybody was like Bengals, Bengals, Bengals. Towards the NFL Network was like, oh, well, I don't want to give them a full sweep. We'll give Kansas City better special teams. And ironically, right. that's what <laughs> But it's exactly. one of the things to where they have a veteran secondary and we don't. That's where they have the upper hand. Our front four, our linebackers, they solid. Our secondary, outside of Reed, are all a year to two years in the game. So you got to get – was it Slade Jr.? Is that his name, Nelson, or whatever? The, was it Corner? Yeah, Slade Detroit. Jr. Detroit. He's a fucking beast, and he's better than anybody we have in our secondary. Oh, yeah. Detroit was the secondary is much Jr. better. And he's the anchor of that defense. And they'll agree. If they put him on Travis, Travis going to have to work. Because he is with the physical. He's with the shits. And he going to get in his face and play. And I respect and love that. But, yeah, I give the Eagles the defense because of the edge because of their secondary. Okay. Now, before so, – but hold on. I want to go back to that real quick. The, yeah. One thing, though, too, is when people talk about the Chiefs' defense – they talk about the Chiefs defense that has been played the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. I I I I urge you to go back and watch the Bengals game. It's the first time in the Mahomes era where we were getting pressure without blitzing. Our front four made Burrow's life miserable. Yeah. If we can continue, Chris Jones. That, if we can front four, I mean, uh, uh, Clark had a couple sacks. Jones yeah. had one. Karloftis had one. They blitz gay up the middle. I mean, so it wasn't just Chris Jones. Chris Jones put the final stamp on it towards the end, but it wasn't just him. It, it was, was the good, full front four defense. After one thing, and I can't believe I'm saying this, and if you can mute this out so the, nobody else hears it, Tony Romo was actually right. <laughs> Clearly, we played a possum defense week 13. Because the way we played in that game was nothing like we played week 13 against the Bengals. So yeah, it we definitely is change that, that up. We go save this because we go see them later type thing to happen. Well, I mean, yeah, y'all pass rush was going after him. And I know y'all probably don't want to hear this excuse, but he only had one starting lineman, offensive lineman. He had three starters. He had two starters that were out. No, nah, that's not true. It is. Go back and look it up. They've been he had, he had three out in the in the Buffalo Bill game, and then one guy came back and played in, in this game against us. They had two of their starters out. Even with two, many, that's still. I mean, but still, even with that, look how many players we lost during the game. So that's yeah. like apples to oranges. I agree. I mean, we lost three wide receivers, linebackers, cornerback. I'm – Game, come on, y'all. Too. Okay, come on, but okay. it was early in the game. It That's was early in the game. During the game. Okay, so like so, so do the 49ers game. So do the 49ers not have a, a legitimate excuse because they lost their quarterback during the game, and y'all Two was able to just molly the whop them. Well, if we Purdy, caused if that Purdy, to happen. If you got to give the team hurt, credit for causing that to happen. I'm not I'm not taking anything away from what the defense did, but if Purdy played, do you think the score would have been what it was? No, but I think we still would have won easy. Okay. Because okay. I mean, what I mean, what did Purdy? I mean, Purdy didn't get a chance to do nothing, but I think we showed you that our they offensive line wasn't good enough. Well, let's, I mean, talk, let's was, talk offenses then. I, 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 I don't want to use it like I use the defense. I want to break offense down even further. Because of the dynamics. So, player positions. Who's got the better receivers? Oh, come on. I don't even have to argue that. I'd say Philly. Kevin, do you agree? All right, who's got the better tight end? We don't. I I ain't going to argue that either. Yeah. Who's got the better quarterback? We do. We do. Now, I will say this. Uh, because my respective team is in that same division, and I've seen him more often, and especially after seeing Sunday night's game, hurt or not hurt, there was no way in hell he was going to lose this game. It just wasn't. During that last play, when he got knocked out of bounds, after he picked up the first down, there was no way nobody from any team was going to stop him from getting that play. And when you got that, and, and we'll go back to – 
the predictions that everybody had for the Bengals to win again. Show, you heard it from me before the game last week. I said Kansas City was going to win this game because the law of averages, and they got beat by Cincinnati too many times. They wasn't going to let it happen again. You're going to three times in a year. You ain't, that ain't going to happen. Now, if we say Mahomes is the better QB, who's got the better offensive line? I'm going to give – I think that's a it's draw. Like, it's, it's almost a wash. Yeah, it's almost yeah, a wash. That's a draw. I'm going mean, to say Philly. Too. And yeah, here's the reason why. Philly, Philly makes some holes. Tackles. Philly makes some holes for their running backs. I'd say Philly has the better tackles. Interior now, line, I think it's a, it's a wash, man. Now, let's flip it, though. Who's got the better running backs? Because I haven't seen much oh. of Philly, but that Pacheco kid – that is a beast. That's somebody that, I want in my backfield. That's gonna I'm be gonna, go, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. Go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead, man. That's gonna be the, the question mark of the game whose run game gets off. That I think is what it's really gonna come down to. See, that's we, what I think. That's what I think is the wash. I think we have the better tackles, and of course we have the better center. Y'all probably got the better guards, but that's that's two out of the five. So I, that's why I said we have the better offensive line. But I think the wash is going to be the running backs because I think Pacheco is a better inside runner than any running back we have. But our two, I feel like our two running backs are better versions of McKinney. You see what I'm saying? I get they that. love I that scat that. back and they can catch. And I think they do it. I think they run a little better than McKinney, and McKinney might slightly catch a little better than him because Gainwell nope. can catch very good. Yeah. Don't, but then don't, we have Scott. Don't I was going to say, don't laugh at this, but I think Boston Scott is going to have yeah. a game. Yeah. Because I don't think that they will take him too seriously here. No, they I, will. I, it's just in what aspect. That's why I think that this game really, when you really break down the teams, they are evenly matched to where you can pick here, pick there. There's not really a big deciding factor on who's better outside of the secondary because they got bets in a secondary. Outside of that, like you said, you got the better center. Uh, Jason's good, but I don't think he's that much better than Creed. So it's like it's, it's apples to oranges on who's better. Well, I'm, the reason why I'm saying Kelsey is better is because he. He made the the all pro. The he made first mm -hmm. team all pro. That's why I was saying that. Yeah, it's just a it's just an overall kind of thing. Yeah, he got the better body of work, but Creed is he's right there. He's not far behind. Is I guess the best way to put it. Okay. I, I just want to respond to that question on the on the running backs. I'm gonna give the slight edge to Philly just because they run more. Yeah. The, not, not much more. Not much they, more. Yes, they do. They run more than we do. They are a well, run. Are, are you counting the team. option plays, though? Is that a run? It is a run, <laughs> but. It, and yes, I'm counting it. <laughs> but because yeah. because it, the right. reason why I say that is because when it's an option play, you don't know. And, and that's yeah. one of the things that throws the defense off because you don't know if he's really putting that ball in the basket or if he's going to take off with it, or if he's going to throw it. And that kind of opens the door. It opens the door runs. because they run first, then they start pulling the ball back to throw. They don't throw the ball to run. Okay, I can see that. So yeah. that's why I say their scheme is designed to run, be deceptive in that, and then throw over the top to, to Brown. And All when right. and when Hertz throws, the dude is deadly accurate. I mean, he is throwing long balls. He is deadly accurate. If I've got Brown back there catching passes, um, yeah, he's going to be open. Brown gets it's open. Like Brown, this yeah. is the young boy. Was it Sanders or whatever his name is? Or whatever. It's Smith. 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 He's Deontay the one Smith. That, that he's the one that breaks it open. He, he's that that deep threat. But I think we all can agree, though. Let's be honest. If it was a Bengals 49ers Super Bowl, would we even watch? Yes, I would watch. Just because I mean, I'm a football watch, fan. Or you go yeah. what you do about these two. I wouldn't. I, I, 
Well, since you opened the door bitter. for Raider fan, I would be happier if the Chiefs weren't in it. <laughs> well, we know that your Super Bowl is going to be the Pro Bowl when Carr get out there for flag football. <laughs> you serious? Hey, I'll take that. I'll take that. Hey, what's the over under on uh, Kevin Hart showing up? Over. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, he gonna be there. He gonna be there. And them tickets is oh, them tickets probably Kevin Hart probably gonna pay about fifty, sixty thousand dollars for a seat. Because no, little I'll, people like us, it costs five thousand dollars. Yeah, they said the most expensive seat right now was about twenty nine thousand. Wow, yep, I can't I'm believe out. it's that less. Well, you know, the closer it's, it gets, the more it's going to get expensive. I might have it's to free in my living room. Yep, I it's heard that. Here. Yep. Hey. Oh, uh, Nelson, are we watching it together? Yeah, why not? Okay. Now, as we wind this on down, fellas, I got to get score predictions. Start oh, one more question. One okay, more question, because here's the real question. Better coach. Oh, Andy. Andy Reid. Andy. Andy. Okay. The man's one went away from being winning his coach in Chiefs history like he is in Philly. Status. It, yeah, it does mean a lot. I'm only giving it to Andy because he has the experience. He's had he's had great success with both teams. He's won a Super Bowl with uh the Chiefs, and he's taken Philly to a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Well, we lost basically on a last second drop. Well. It was our last second trying to tie the game up, but yeah, it's a, yeah. if you can take McNabb but you know what? and T.O., but you, you know don't what? take McNabb and T.O. to the that Super Bowl, you're a great failure. coach. It wasn't and really a failure. It wasn't really a failure. Here's why. Who did y'all lose to? Wasn't the it the Eagles? Patriots? Yeah, wasn't it the Patriots y'all lost to no, in that Super Bowl? Anymore. Yeah, it was the Patriots the first time, and they beat them when yeah, they played. Sure. The everybody, team. everybody has lost to the Patriots that hasn't been the New York Giants. So there's oh, no shame in go, that. Here, here you go. He, go ahead and have your moment. Y'all know he, he got it. Uh, no, I'm just saying there's nothing wrong. There's no shame in losing to the Patriots. I mean, they cheated their way to the top. They deserve that. Now, <clears throat> back to the uh, subject at hand. If he ain't cheating, he ain't trying. Don't tuck his shirt in. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it. I don't I'm, make me have nightmares. Uh, Kevin, starting with you, final score. Uh, I'm going to say 28-23 Chiefs. Mm. Nelson? I'm going to say 29-20 uh, Eagles. Mm. Big show. Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Don't leave us hanging like that. Throw something out. You and I can change it. You and I can change it next week, but, you know. Okay, well, if I get to change it, then it's going to be 42 to 7, Kansas City. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Yeah, he's not biased at all. Um, well, I think, like, the Raw is going to be a good game. What better thing than my cousin's team so we can talk shit to each other? I ain't going to tell you how he ignored my phone call Sunday night because he was running scared. But I ain't going to bring <laughs> it up. I ain't going to bring it up at all. You know what? Because <laughs> this is the thing. I have 49er fans, which I saw Kevin on Facebook, shorty side with a San Francisco fan with that old oh, ugly man. bang, bang, <laughs> minor game. And now I got him crying. Because he was posting all kind of stuff, and now he don't like me attacking him. But uh, they talk so much trash, the Niners family, that I'm I'm giving it to them. I'll get my, I'll get my Chiefs thing next week. But right now, this is me. I'm going at the Niners fan. Because they swore that they was this, they was that. And even without a quarterback, I still feel like that defense should have kept us from scoring. They they yeah. proclaimed themselves during the week they were the tougher team overall, and they, that they was gonna bully us and push us around. It didn't look like that. It didn't end mm. up like that either. Plus, that's the game I wanted. All right, Plus, now winding this on down. 
a uh, couple things. First, I want to thank Kevin and Nelson for coming on. This has been yes, fun. Thank you guys. Second, game prediction for me. The final score will be 27-24. Y'all yeah, looking like will win. Yeah, that's all that I'm I'm not telling you who yet. Y'all gotta wait till next week. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm keeping to that score, but I will say on the next episode who I think is gonna win. And it's not like everybody at home is like, oh, he's a Raider fan. He's going with the Eagles. I didn't say that. Who, who did I go with last week? Kansas City. I, I, I'm a football fan. I am a football fan. I love me some football. I don't care who's in it. I'm watching the Super Bowl. I've watched Patriots Super Bowls before, and it hurt. But Hold on. Are you still a Raiders fan? Or, or, I know you said you was going to possibly put your fandom in the closet if that move happened. So – Right now, you still a fan? If Brady is in that backfield, and, and me and Big Show talked about this, it is going to hurt. It is really mm. going to hurt. But if they putting up Ws, I might dust off the silver and black. You know, I oh, ain't that some shit. I ain't exactly. They go, y'all. Have, no, y'all no. Have Here's the thing. Like I told you. I didn't say I was a Brady fan. I didn't say I was a Brady fan. I am a Raiders fan. You're a fan of the team first. The team first. I don't think that Brady gives them the best opportunity to win. So I wouldn't go that route. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for being on the show. I appreciate it. We, Man, it's been wonderful. I will see y'all soon. Prediction next week. Show take us out of here. God bless y'all. Thank you for coming. Talking all this Brady stuff. I'm going to have PTSD. And I wasn't even involved in the tuck rule. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Good night. Darian, I need a rope. I'm going to hang myself. Holler at your boy. Fly, Eagles, fly. What? They're going to fly right into that motherfucking bus off of Kansas City. (laughs) We're going to have Mahomes' ankles on our uh, over our fireplace.